Another take on our top story now, Goldman Sachs trying to improve its image. The investment bank joining with Warren Buffett to pump half a billion dollars into helping 10,000 small businesses. For another perspective, we are joined right now by a man who spent three decades there as a consultant. He also wrote The Partnership, The Making of Goldman Sachs, uh, widely recognized as the definitive book on Goldman. Charles Ellis joins us now. He is the founder of Greenwich Associates, an international strategy consulting firm. Charlie, so glad to have you with us. Thanks Good for coming here. in. Thanks. Were you surprised? Eric and I have been speaking this morning with a different guest among ourselves even. Were you surprised by CEO Lloyd Blankfein's public apology? Well, Lloyd Blankfein surprises people a lot because he is so straight and he is basically fearless about telling it the way it really is. And he's been that way with investors for a long time. He's been that way with people inside the firm for a long time. He's been that way with clients for a long time. So in that sense, you've got to be not surprised. On the other hand, if you say, how many CEOs of large corporations are candid about, we screwed up, we made a mistake, we did something we're not proud of? Not very many. So in that case, it's surprising. Your choice, either way. What does it say about Goldman Sachs in as much as... Would you have expected the same thing from Hank Paulson? Would you have expected the same thing from John Corzine? Would you have expected it from John Weinberg? John Weinberg, the answer would be sure. If it ever happened on his watch, John Whitehead, the answer is sure. If it ever happened on his watch, uh, Sidney Weinberg would have had people laughing in the aisles if it had happened on his watch as he apologized for what he had done. Uh, others that you named and mentioned, I doubt it. Not in their personality. What do you make of the charitable giving? We, we were just speaking with somebody from uh, the Rockefeller, it's not the Rockefeller Foundation, Rockefeller Philanthropy Group, about the size that Goldman is now uh, donating or, or investing, if you like, depending on the way you want to term it. And she's saying, quite frankly, this is just normal. You know, it's the right time of year. Obviously, every Fortune 500 company does this, should do it. Does anything stick out to you about the size, about who they have involved, Warren Buffett, about their way they're going about it? Well, I think Warren Buffett's terrific, and I think Mike Porter is terrific, and they've got a cast of a dozen different people, college presidents and people who really know the groundwork. I think the exciting thing is that they've got convening power. They can bring a great group of people together, and they've got concept power. They can have an idea that would cause people to say, hey, you know, I like that. Uh, you can look at it, I know you did earlier, divide it by the number of people, divide it by the number of... You know, Compare it to the bonuses app. going to individuals. Yes. You can trivialize it. What a shame. Watch how many other people are doing something, and then I think they're doing something worthwhile. If they did it at a much larger scale, I think it'd be too big to be able to do it really well. So the real question is, will they do this really well? I think they will, but that's a bet. It's like the 10,000 women. Their implementation was even better than the concept. And that was a $200 million project that Goldman contributed to earlier this year. Yeah, but it was the idea and the drive and the fact that they deploy some of their best people to think through and make it happen. It may or may not happen. But the interesting thing to me is how quickly we look at this specific thing and leave behind something that that firm constantly leaves behind. If you take all the firms in Wall Street, and match them up against Goldman Sachs alone. Doesn't seem like a fair fight, but let's do that. How many people serve as trustees of major educational institutions, arts institutions, cultural the institutions? The argument is that it's self-serving, though. No, but that's Goldman Sachs. People doing it quietly on their own have been doing it for years. If you do it in terms of individual philanthropy, how much have they done? More than all the rest of Wall Street, year after year after year. This is one item, and this is not the end of the war. It's just one item. Do you think it does anything, though, to uh, ease Goldman's PR problem? Yeah, it could. Does it by itself? Not a chance. Look at all the skeptical questions you guys have already raised. You don't see this being all that big a deal. It's not all that big a deal, but if it's part of a systematic, unrelenting campaign, which would be typical of Goldman Sachs, in everything, then you'll probably see something really quite impressive over time.